Welcome to TA Digest. Can you tell us about yourself, your role and your podcast? My name is Christian Webster and um, recently set up the Teachers Lounge podcast. And basically it was a little bit of um, a coming together with me and my two teaching assistants at the moment. So I've got um, Kaylee and Sophie and how it all came about was we were just chatting one day um, the start of the year last year and we all we all listened to podcasts but we were saying oh th- there isn't really a podcast that talks about the things that we always talk about in the classroom um they're always a little bit too serious so um that kept on going for weeks and weeks and in my mind i, I was just thinking well maybe I, maybe i should start one you know and it was um chipping away chipping away and then sophie was like yeah 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 you should start one and I eventually was like, well, if I do start one, would you guys come on and we'll do like a teaching assistant one for the first one? And they were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't think they really thought I would start one. And then when the summer holidays came, I thought, well, just before I thought I'm going to go for it. It's the perfect time. I can get all the things ready and um, try and get people in into the calendar. And yeah, I, I dropped it on them on our class chat. And I said, right, I'm ready. Are you coming on? And poor old Kaylee was a little bit um, like, oh, I'm not sure. And I said, go on, Kaylee, you'll be great. And yeah, thankfully, they both agreed to do it. So you recently launched your podcast, The Teacher's Lounge, and your first guests were the teaching assistants that you worked with. Why did you decide to have them as your very first guests on the podcast? To start with, they're both great. And we have a really good dynamic um, in our team. Um, and we bounce off each other really well. Um, and just how it, it came together, it, it, it just was perfect for the first episode and we're always talking about the issues with teaching assistants obviously i'm really lucky to have two teaching assistants um well it was last year so we're always talking about issues um and things like that so we just thought let's let's do it for the first episode let's talk about the things that we always talk about in school and in class and let's make people aware of it because people are just not aware of the things that go on regarding teaching assistants whatsoever so um yeah, and, and we did say also, we said, let's try it for the first episode. And if it's an absolute nightmare, we'll we'll call it quits. So it was a little bit of a test at the same time. And I'm really grateful to them because they were so supportive and they, they were saying, just go for it, you know, it'll be great. And yeah, I'm hoping to make them more regulars and, and get them on as often as I can. And we'll do some more fun things with them both on as well. Um, it's clear listening to the podcast and chatting with you that you really value the work of teaching assistants and the relationship that you have with teaching assistants that you work with. Um, why do you think teaching assistants are so important in school and when or what moment first made you realise this? I'll answer the second question first. So when I very first started teaching in my NQT year, um, you, although you prepare for school and that first r- role, you have no idea it's completely different and you you're thrown into the deep end and in my first year um without my teaching assistant i i would have been completely lost and the help that she gave me was absolutely fantastic and it was from there that i realized oh my word you know this person is so experienced and so knowledgeable and they don't get the credit or that they deserve for everything that they've been able to teach me and for the shift that they put in day to day, I mean, their expertise, I mean, they've been they've been doing that for over 20 years. And I mean, that it was just, I can't believe you're not being acknowledged more for your worth. So that was the first time it hit me when I very first started training, because you almost have that perception when you're a new NQT and you just finish your teaching qualification. You're like, yes, you know, I'm going in. I know more than you. Mm-hmm. And straight away, you have to get rid of that. And that's what hit me straight away. It was like, actually, this person here, just because they're not as qualified, well, as qualified, doesn't mean that they're not as good or in a a less fortunate position to be able to do what you can do. Um, So straight away, it it was like a hard shock. I had to forget everything that I thought. And those teaching assistants in my first, I would say in my first five years, the knowledge that they were able to give me and the things that they could do that I just couldn't do, it it humbled me is the best way to to put it, really. And although you're given a mentor when you first start and your mentor is another teacher, really, your mentor should be the teaching assistant because 
they're in such a better position to be able to mentor you because they're with you day to day. And it's not just a 30 minute meeting with your teacher mentor that you go to once every couple of weeks. So they are your actual mentors and shape how you teach for the rest of your career. How do you create such a strong professional working relationship with the teaching assistants that you work with? I would say to start with, you have to go in on an equal playing field. And um, on the podcast, I, I don't, I don't know if it's a little bit um, cheesy or or whatever, but what I always like to do, no matter who my teaching assistants are, I always say to them, um, you know, like we're a team, no one's better than whatever, and, and we do this in front of the kids. And um, I always make a point of saying, right, you know, if something goes wrong, who who do you go to or who's in charge? And they always say, me. And I go, no, no, no. I said, we are, and I make a big point of saying, we are both in charge of this classroom. And I say, you know, I am not more in charge than so and so, and so and so is not more in charge of me. We are a, a team. Um, and I do that privately as well with whoever I would have as my teaching assistant and just make a point of saying, you know, I really value you and we're going to be a team. And like what you were saying before, I'll say, look, if you feel like something isn't working, please say, you know, and we'll, we'll change it. And likewise, I'll, I'll tell you, you know, you have that, that professional relationship where you, you're open to that constructive feedback, but in a nice way. And um, yeah, I think Sophie and Kaylee, they're so good at that as well. And we've built that. And if I do something that I can't really see um, from my perspective, that isn't really working, Kaylee or Sophie will say, oh, that was good. But at, at this moment in time, when you did that, it didn't really work or so-and-so wasn't quite understanding that. And I think if you don't have that, you can't really grow and have that. You, you can't be an effective team in the classroom because you've got to be able to see things from other people's perspective and take that criticism on board as well. What would your top three tips be for other teachers and TAs hoping to build a strong professional working relationship for the upcoming year? I would just say, um, well, if you've never met before, obviously try and build that relationship and make it clear from the beginning that that you're, you've got to make them buy into the team ethos that you're trying to create. Um, as soon as you start putting barriers up and, you know, saying, you know, you do this, you do this you know make make them a cup of tea in the morning D you know do things to, to show them that you value them and that bond and that relationship will grow straight away um also like we just touched upon um let them know that their input is really valuable and ask them for their constructive feedback and and just say you know i'm not going to take it personally you know we're a team we've got to get better together um, and finally, just have fun. Just try and build a fun, creative environment, get to know each other, and then, you know, you can bring that into the classroom and, and have lots of fun. You've got to have that release for you as well, as, and the kids pick up on it as well. And just a couple of little examples, which, like, are so funny and we always talk about. So Kaylee is, like, massively into a walk-in, and um, we always, like, have some banter and say, oh, how many steps have you done today? And then, you know, like, oh, I've done more steps than you, things like that. And um, Sophie was making this fantastic display for me and it had some leopard print on. And we, we were saying, oh, that's quite um, like EastEnders vibes, you know, like, um, is it Thingy Slater um, yeah, Cat from Slater. EastEnders? Cat Slater, yeah, it's Cat Slater vibes. And then we got talking about EastEnders and then we were saying, how funny would it be to put like a little Phil Mitchell head or something on the display, you know, that nobody would see? And it's just like little fun things like that, you know, so... Long story short, we ended up making a little Phil Mitchell head, um, but we didn't put it in <laughs> on our display. One of the other teachers that we have a good relationship to, we just snuck it into their classroom by their desk and we thought we'd see how long it takes to realise. And it's just little fun things like that that really you know, make your days go quicker and build that brilliant relationship. In an ideal world, is there anything that you would change about the teaching assistant role? Oh, this is really hard because the role of a TA is so varied and every day is different. I don't think you could really change the role because sc schools are just so unpredictable and every day there would be something that 
a teacher or a teaching assistant would have to do you couldn't i don't think you could confine them to a specific role because there's so many different things that would happen but i wish their role was um redefined or rebranded if if you see what i mean i i wish they had more credit um i wish they they weren't called teaching assistants i wish they were called assistant teachers or something that gives them more credit for the work that they do um and yeah the pay the pay as well i just i just think the whole role branding and um how it's perceived by the general public and people that don't work in education i just wish that changed really and finally what can we look forward to on future episodes of your podcast me sophie and kaylee were chatting about this and when we were saying uh, there's loads of podcasts out about education but nothing really specific about the things that we talk about in the staff room or you know in our classroom so it's it's we've planned it out for series one um there's going to be roughly about 10 to 15 episodes i think we're on episode five at the moment and it's just going to be things that we would genuinely talk about in the classroom um so there's going to be some light-hearted things um the episode that we just put on was all about funny stories and we had loads of teaching assistants and teachers um right in and we read out some funny stories from so things like that um but then also some of the important issues like the teaching assistant episode that we feel aren't really in the public eye as much and people may not know about so we've got a fantastic um we've got a fantastic colleague that works in my school at the moment and she's working with a child with down syndrome but originally originally she's from canada um, so she's agreed to come on and she has so much experience working with SEN children, children with special needs across, you know, multiple platforms. So she has such a wealth of knowledge. So just getting her on, getting her perspective, um, but also from the Canadian standpoint, how does it differ? Um, we've got somebody coming on that teaches in England. Obviously, I teach in Wales. So just how that differs, because, again, people don't realise how that differs. So it's just little things that people might not necessarily have thought of in schools and but things that your everyday teacher or people that work in school would would know about and, and talk about all the time. Reach out, get in touch and follow TA Digest for more.